today we want to look at solving quadratic inequalities. Uh, now, quadratic inequalities are quite a bit different from your regular linear inequalities because um, you have to find factors. Uh, it's just like taking a, a quadratic equation and finding factors. And in fact, you need to treat this as though it is a quadratic equation. Now, if this were a quadratic equation and not an inequality, you would move the 35 to the other side of the inequality. And that's just using the addition property, so no big deal here. x squared plus 2x minus 35 is less than or equal to 0. Now, the key thing that we're trying to find here is we're trying to find what values of x will make this guy equal 0. Um, the reason we want to find out what makes this equal to 0 is because on either side of that, you have the potential to be positive or negative. So those critical values, those numbers that make this polynomial equal 0, uh, those values that make it equal 0 act as our gatekeepers between positives and negatives. So we need to find out what those guys are, and they will kind of define and separate our uh, number line into distinct intervals. Uh, so let's go ahead and find out what those factors are. If I factor this guy just as though it were any other polynomial, I would have x plus 7 times x minus 5. Now, don't worry too much about this guy right here. All this guy is telling me right now is that I need all of this stuff right here to be less than or equal to 0, which means I'm looking for values that are I'm looking for values that are negative. I need to find those values that are negative. Okay. So th this is where we kind of stop looking at this as though it's a quadratic equation and we just start trying to figure out what those um, critical values are. So from here one critical value is when x equals negative 7, and the other critical value is when x equals positive 5. So these values of x, what I'm referring to as my critical values or my critical numbers, uh, you're going to run into these guys a lot when you take uh, calculus. Okay? Uh, we're doing derivatives, um, finding concavity, and all this other great stuff. You're going to have to find critical values. So what these critical values do is that when I come down here and I look at my Look at my number line. I have negative 7 and positive 5. And it's as though it has divided this number line into one, two, three different areas. Now, here's something that we do know. We know that at negative 7, we will be equal to zero, which is actually going to work out well for us. And we're, gonna, we're gonna be able to include that because this less than or equal to zero means negative values and also being equal to zero. So I get to have negative seven and I get to have positive five. I know those guys are part of my solution set, so that's why those guys are filled in. I now need to pick test points. Uh, this is just one way of figuring out uh, what the correct intervals will be for the solution. Uh, by picking test points, I'm just going to pick something that's um, less than negative 7, pick a value between negative 7 and 5, and then pick a number that's larger than 5. I plug them into the original and see how things test out. Is it true? Is it false? And that will tell me uh, my solutions. So if I pick something like, let's uh, suppose I pick negative 8 here, no need to get really large. Uh, between negative 7 and 5, if you can, I pick 0. 0 is the easiest number to plug into anything. And then pick something that's larger than 5, let's just say 6. Now, it's best to check against the original. If I were to check negative 8 against the original, let's see what I would have. By plugging that in, that would give me a positive 64 minus 16, and I want to know, is that less than or equal to 35? 64 minus 16 is 48. Is 48 less than or equal to 35? And the answer, of course, is no. So that side is not valid. If I plug in 0, 
I have 0 plus 0. Is that less than or equal to 35? And of course the answer is yes. 0 is less than or equal to 35. That is a true statement, so I'm going to check that area. Uh, now, picking 0 means I could have picked anything in between these two values, and it still would have been true. Okay, it's, It still would have worked out against the original. Now when I pick 6, that's going to give me 36 plus 12, and I want to see if that's less than or equal to 35, and clearly this is not less than or equal to 35. So that doesn't work, just like this guy didn't work. So this interval over here is not part of the solution set. So what we're saying is that if we pick anything between negative 7 and positive 5, that will be our solution set. So my solution for this quadratic inequality is from negative 7 to positive 5, including both of those end values, negative 7 and 5. Now, there's another way that we can check this guy, and that's by uh, using what I call a sign table. So keep in mind what our critical values are and what the factors are that we're working with. We're working with the factors x plus 7 and x minus 5. So here's how we're going to do this. I'm working with the factors x plus 7 and x minus 5. And then eventually I'm going to see what happens whenever I combine these guys and I look at their product. x plus 7 times x minus 5. In this particular method for finding the the intervals that work, you're not worried about the actual numbers as you are about the signs, positive or negative. Okay, so uh, let me keep going down a little bit further here. I'm working with my with my number line with the critical values of negative seven and positive five. These are the guys that are important to me. Now. All I'm going to do up here for each of these rows is I'm going to write out the signs for the different values. So, for example, here, x plus 7, his critical value was negative 7, which means this guy's going to be 0 here. Now, on the left side, if I were to pick, pick values like negative 8, negative 9, and so on, and plug them in here, I end up with negative values. And really, if you have linear factors with a positive coefficient for x, it's going to be negative on the left of 0, and they're going to have positive values once you get to the right side of uh, their critical value, their gatekeepers, I like to call it. Because think about it, if you pick numbers that are larger than negative 7, as you come out here, see how this matches up? Uh, pick numbers like 0, 5, 100, whatever. When you plug that in here, you're going to end up with a positive value. Again, the magnitude of that number is irrelevant. The sign is what we're focused on. Now when we look at x minus 5, he has his gatekeeper, or his 0 value, at positive 5. When you pick values on the left side of him, he will, re will return a negative value. And he's going to give you positive values on the right side. Uh, just imagine, here's 5. On this side is 0. If I plug in 0 here, I'm going to end up with a negative value. If I plug in 10, which is on this other side, I'm going to get a positive value. Now I want to look and see what happens when I do this actual product. So negative times negative will yield positive values. 0 times a negative is 0. Positive times a negative will give you negative. Positive times 0 will always give you a 0. And when you multiply two positives, you're again going to get positive. So what this is saying is that for uh, the inequality that I had above, for this guy right here, I'm looking for those values that will be less than or equal to 0. That means I was looking for negative values. So let's look down at my sign chart and see what I have. For my sign chart, you see right here in the middle is where I have negative values. So I know for that inequality to be true, I would be including just these negative values because that's what it was asking for. It also said I could equal 0, which means I get to fill in these values that make it 0. 
So we still have the same solution set that we had above, which is from negative 7 to positive 5. So you can do it based on the signs of the different factors that you have in your polynomial. Or you could do what I did up here and just pick these test values to see what works for each of these intervals.